but it's been an interesting break from football. Um, you know, we, you know, I, uh, I was playing, you know, football pretty much full time for the better part of 20 years. So, um, uh, the first fall, uh, you know, watching people play football while I was at home is uh, interesting, um, as I think uh, it is with most guys that uh, retire from playing in the NFL for a while. So, it's kind of what I've been up to. Did, did you lose a lot of weight after? You- <laughs> Yeah, no, I uh, I lost about sixty pounds, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe about sixty five. So um, it was uh, it's a it's a pretty good deal. Um, I'm still waiting. Uh, it's still a little overrated. Uh, I'm still waiting to like you know have a little bit more energy and feel good. But uh, I think uh, I'm on the right track. But um, no, it was a good uh, it was a good thing to uh, kind of focus on right um, right out the uh, right out of the gate. Um, you know, it's it's another thing to obsess over, and it's kind of an easy transition. You know, you know, you spend so much time in the NFL taking care of your body and uh, doing treatment. You just kind of transition right into uh, <laughs> right into like kind of a hardcore diet, and uh, it, if you do it right away, it, it, it hasn't been too bad. So, Max, you said you were kind of waiting to feel a little bit better, I guess, from from <laughs> kind of getting your balance from losing weight. But how were you feeling physically at the end of your NFL career? I mean. When you retired, most of us were pretty shocked, but you said you kind of felt like it was coming. Oh, man, yeah. I, you know, it better – I mean, it's just it, – you know, you start playing offensive line in the NFL, you know, past the age of 30, you know, it's it's, it's, it's going to be tough. Um, I, but it feels good. You know, You know what I was – you know, towards the end of my career, I mean, it was it was time to, to call it quits. I mean, my uh, – my, you know, I, it felt like um, – you know, my body was almost at the end of being able to do it. And so it was, uh, it, it felt like it was time, but, uh, you know, I'm feeling better, you know, I mean, I think that that's, uh, it's just a lot of maintenance and, uh, that, you know, the more you kind of, um, the more you move around, I think the, the better you feel. And the really, <laughs> the hard thing is, is, you know, doing stuff that you're not used to, you know, you're used to lifting such heavy weights and, and conditioning for so long and, and really football specific stuff. And as soon as you get out of that, you get humbled pretty quickly, man. I tell you what, if you go for a jog for five minutes, crushes you. That's harder than nine on seven in training camp, boy, I'm telling you. So no, it's been, it's been good. Max, what were those, um, Sunday afternoons like last fall, just watching the Saints. Uh, I, I guess I assume you watched them. I don't know if you did or not, but what was yeah. it like you did? Yeah, it's um, you know, you hear, you, you know, you, you know, I, you talk to guys, you talk to somebody like Zach or you know, um, other guys, um, you know, Stinchcomb, guys that have retired kind of before, and and what their experience is, um, um, you know, right after you play, and it's funny because you're you're so familiar with, um. You're so familiar with, you know, what's going on in the team and, you know, the play is being called. And so it's, it's, it's really hard to watch the games, honestly, um, just because, you're, you know, you know, a personnel group saying, you know, you know, they're in the red zone. You know, you, you kind of know what's going on and you're so invested in um, you're so invested in the players and, and how they're doing. And so when you see when you don't know what's going on and you don't have any influence on the outcome of the game, it's tough. Um, I was not expecting that. Um, but at the same time, uh, it was, it was, it was, um, uh, I guess interesting is the, is the best way to describe it. I've never had it gotten to do it. Right. And so, yeah. uh, I, uh, I enjoyed it. It was nice. Um, I didn't, uh, you know, there were so far, no regrets. Um, but, uh, it, it was, uh, it was hard to watch the games to answer your question. Max, when you retired last year, I mean, obviously, you know, your departure was the probably the biggest question mark for this team. Um, did you get a chance to watch Eric McCoy much? And just how do you feel like he did just you yeah. know, in for you? I mean, the guy came in there and just played his butt off. I mean, I, I watched him quite a bit. You know, I, I talked to, you know, Dan, our coach, um, you know, quite a bit. Um, this, this not quite a bit. I talked to him, you know, off and on. Um, and 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 he just had nothing but really good stuff to say about um, how Eric played, and uh, it was impressive. I mean, the guy came in. I think he started every game, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, at center, um, that's that's hard to do, um, and especially in this offense. And you know, Drew coming into the huddle and calling the plays at about a hundred miles an hour. So, um, you know, I think that uh, I think a lot of people have a lot of high expectations for him and and, and really that whole group. Um, you know, I know that we have a uh, Caesar. Uh, we drafted a, another guy in the first round, and I think that uh, you know the expectations are obviously pretty high for a first round draft pick coming in and and um, and playing. So. Can you Max, ask, last year was your first year not playing since what age? 
Oh man, uh, uh, just um, high school. Uh, my first year playing football was in um, my freshman year of high school. So uh, whatever, whatever that is, ninety nine, two thousand, something like that. I think. When you say it's hard to do to to play in this offense, come in and pick it up. Like, what, what is that process like? Building chemistry with Drew and getting comfortable with him, and then what makes it a unique challenge? Yeah. So, so this is you know, you know, they've been building this offense for this is is this this is Sean's fifteenth year here. Yeah. Is that right? Right. Yeah. So this is this has been building on you know, and and he has this thing, and so Drew and Sean and you know everybody that's been involved with this has been building the same offense you know for so long, and they're so familiar with it and so used to it, and so even as a vet or somebody else coming in, but when Drew gets into the huddle and calls a play, he's drawing on 15 years of building the same offense, right? And the speed and the familiarity in which, you know, people who have been in the system have with it and the complexity of it is challenging. You know, I think I came uh, in my, when I got traded, it was my eighth year, I think. And so, I, you know, I played a lot of football, but um, it's still, it was a pretty good learning curve, you know, the, just the the speed of which you are, um, expected to grasp it and hear the play call and digest all that information and get to the line and make the calls. Um, it's, it's hard, you know, um, I hope that kind of answers your question. Yeah. And then just the other one, like you've played with a couple different quarterbacks. Is, is there like a, a unique chemistry building period with every quarterback? Is it, is it different? Cause you know, a lot of people are like, Oh, they just snap the ball, but I'm assuming it's not that easy. Yeah, um, you know, each quarterback's different. I mean, uh, it, it's funny, you know, you um, you go somewhere and you snap to a guy that you haven't really done, uh, uh, taking a lot of reps with, you go to the Pro Bowl, you're, you know, you're at some some function and you just say, hey, you know, snap this ball to this guy. It's like pretty different. Um, but again, you know, the more the more you play center, um, I guess the more you um, you can kind of adjust on the fly. Um, and, and really, I mean, it just kind of becomes second nature, I'm sure, you know, is is you know, Eric is, is, can probably tell you right now. I mean, it takes, you know, a month or so in the off season program and then uh, you're kind of on it and, and, and uh, you forget about it after that. Max, if you could, uh, you alluded to Sean Payton, 15 years in this offense, just as crazy as 2020 has been with COVID and social unrest and things that have happened with the Saints, just their ability because of the, you know, the institutional knowledge everybody has to maybe, adapt quicker than other teams. How quickly do you think this team can deal with everything that's going on in the world and the organization and maybe weather the storm better than maybe some other franchises potentially that are in a different situation? Yeah, you know, and I think that just comes down to, you know, the the leaders in the locker room, um, the 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 type of players that, um, you know, this organization brings in. And I think the expectations, you know, for those players that, um, you know, haven't been around football for what going on, what, eight months right now? I mean, uh, you know, uh, that that is, I think, the benefit of, you know, a tenured coaching staff and, you know, a group of, of leaders that, um, are able to, you know, just adapt really quickly and, and, and really kind of pick up where they left off. And I think that that, you know, the more vets you have on your team and, you know, the, the more familiar, you know, you are with the offense and, uh, you know, I mean, this is just obviously speculation, but, you know, I, I'd like to see <laughs> the Saints, you know, do very well with this, but, uh, it's, this is uncharted territory. I mean, as you guys know, um, this is, this is something that, uh, you know, nobody really knows what they're dealing with. So, and, and, and I mean, I'm sitting I'm sitting here talking like I know what I have, you know, know what I'm talking about. But, uh, you know, hopefully that's the that's the case. Hey, Max, having played, um, I get you played some tackle in college, right? <laughs> How did you know that? That was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. But what was the transition like just for you? Because, I mean, obviously the Saints have some guys who may, you know, have to shuffle around and go from guard to, to center or whatever. But what was that transition like for you? It's not awesome. Um, you know, it's you look at a game day roster in the NFL and you have, you know, we're lucky, you know, uh, Sean is Sean's pretty awesome about getting a lot of O-linemen, you know, up on game day. But, you know, I've you know played a lot of games in the NFL where we had seven guys up. Right. And so the expectation in the NFL is that you are able to play multiple positions. Right. You know, you got swing, swing guard and tackle, you know, sometimes an interior guy and then a swing tackle. And that's pretty much it. And so it from the outside, you know, being able to play multiple positions on the offensive line should be a given, but it is hard. You know, I'm not even going to lie. I played tackle and center in college and then I was drafted and, um, I played guard my rookie year and it was 
not good. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> it was, you want to see some bad tape turn on the 2009 Seattle Seahawks. Um, but again, um, you know, the more reps you get, um, uh, you have to do it. Right. Um, and I think that that front office is scout offensive lineman that they know can play multiple positions for that exact reason, because the transition is tough and you are expected to do it. Um, but it is difficult. Um, you know, some guys can do it better than others. Um, I was, <laughs> I was not one of those guys. So thankfully, <laughs> thankfully I was able to play center well enough to just, you know, stay there. Max, did you follow a lot of the, I guess the hype and the hoopla surrounding Taysom this off season? I know you only played with him two years and he kind of had a, a tremendous breakout, so to say, maybe in 2019, but just your thoughts on, when you hear he's the heir apparent or Sean Payton talks about him as the next Steve Young as the guy who at least snapped it to him in practice. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Sean called him the next Steve Young? Well, I don't know if he said that. I'm paraphrasing, so don't quote me on that. But I, I guess Steve Young-like or Steve yeah. Young ability there. But there's a lot of hype and hoopla surrounding him and just having played with him, maybe potentially being Drew's success or just your thoughts on kind of the hype of Taysom Hill. Taysom yeah, you know, it's just, it's it's really funny, you know, I mean, uh, if, if you want to talk about just a pure athlete, right, I mean, you look at Taysom and he's he's the guy, right, uh, I mean, he's, you know, ripped, you know, fast, you know, he's got it all, intangible, super coordinated, he's, you know, the complete deal, um, but it's just so funny because, you know, he was a quarterback, right, and so you have this, like, vision of what you think a quarterback is, and then all of a sudden we see Taysom in a, you know, a black or a red jersey or whatever running down on kickoff one day in, I don't know, when was it, 2018 or something, and it was, you know, the most ridiculous thing in the world. And then he makes, you know, two tackles on special teams, his first, his first outing. And so I think everybody's eyes kind of opened up after that. And then obviously his trajectory is, is been what it is since then. But, um, uh, a player like that, I mean, you have to find a way to get him on the field. And I think that, um, most of, you know, everybody's, you know, assessment of him is, is spot on. Um, the, I, 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 you know, where he plays, I don't know. Um, I, I never got enough reps with him, um, when he played quarterback. Um, and, and obviously that's changed in the, in the almost two years that I've been out of football. And so, um, I think all of our expectations are high. What, how you use him and what he does, I, I have no idea, but uh, I think that the hype is justified, um, for, for, for him, um, you know, athletically certainly. And, and, and I, and I think he can play quarterback. I haven't seen it enough. Um, but I would assume so just from everything else I've seen, you know, him do so. Did they tag him? What? What? Did they tend? They give him a, a tender, right? Would he get a first round tender? Yeah, first yeah. round. Tender. Okay. That yeah, makes, he got a contract that too. Sense. Yeah. That makes that's yeah. Speaking of another quarterback that you played a little bit with, Drew's going into his twentieth season uh, in the NFL, fifteenth with the Saints. Uh, is there an example from your playing days with him that? It just makes sense that he's still playing at 41. Oh man, I, th I think you actually just summed it up. He's still playing football at 41. Uh, no, uh, um, uh, you know, it's it's really hard. I mean, you guys spent, you know, you guys have been around him, and and you know, um, and you know what he's all about. But um, I, I've never been around somebody that has been able to stick. I mean, I, you know, we all have our routines, right? And, um, the longer you play, obviously the, the, the more invested into your routine you have to be, you know, you get older and, um, you know, you start to get worn down a little bit, but Drew's routine is, is, is something that's like hard to kind of put into words unless you've, you've seen it. And I, and I kind of tell people that too, you know, the guy I've never, you know, I played with him for four years, never one time that did, did I beat him into the building or leave after him. Right. And so, um, the, the, the volume of, of work that he puts in into it uh, for a day for me would be unsustainable. And somehow he's at 41 years old and he hasn't missed a step, um, for 20 years in the NFL. Um, and so it makes sense to me that he's able to do that. Just seeing how much treatment he does, you know, his, his training off the field and his preparation, um, um, it all makes sense. It's not surprising. And I think that, um, and I think that you see it on the field and that's the only way that you can make any sense of it. So 